this is Jared, and today we're going through another Costa Rica mission daily devotional. That was a mouthful, but you know what the deal is. You've been here, if you've been following along the past seven days, then you know exactly what's going on. We're in Costa Rica, we're doing this building project, we're being transformed by God's good work in us, by our service to others. Hopefully we can be transformed by our service. That's our goal this week. We just want to pour out our energies, our time, our talents, our abilities, and our manual labor, especially on the people uh, of the community that will be in in Costa Rica. So thank you for praying over us, for for sending you, all of all of your prayers, your prayer warriors out there. We really appreciate. Um, and if you've got a prayer that you've been praying this week, love to love to hear from you in the comments below. It would be really encouraging to, I imagine, the friends and family that are back here, uh, back in the States, uh, to hear from others what others are praying over this team of 12 missionaries. Really cool and uh, would love, uh, I'm, I'm sure it would be a neat conversation and neat to read the different prayers that have been prayed over this group uh, throughout this week. We are in day dot 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 seven, is that right? Yes, Thursday, July the 18th. And today's devotional comes to us from Candy Hammett. And she, uh, uh, her scripture for this devotional comes from Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 24 through 25. Let's take a read of this. Hebrews chapter 10, 24 and 25. And let us consider how to stir up one another, to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I really like this passage, especially uh, we're working, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, from, you know, First United Methodist Church, uh, if you'd like to go like the page, if you'd like to read this along with me, this devotional for today, it'll already be up. Um, and uh, so that, that'll be really encouraging, uh, I'm sure, to the, to the community there also, in addition to the community here. And so uh, I like this passage because, as is the tradition of the Methodist Church that came out of these holy clubs, John and Charles and others, uh, in these holy clubs over in, uh, at Cambridge, is that right? Was it Cambridge that they went to school? Uh, you know, oh man, I'll have to think back. I did a video on Charles Wesley as part of that four-part, uh, woo! There was a, a, a verb slip there, uh, but four-part, excuse me, uh, series on uh, the great hymn writers of history. So if you want to check that out, uh, that, that, that one that I did on Charles Wesley, you can learn more about him if you want, the starting, the founding of that, of the, the United, uh, what, what was the, the Methodist Church, right? The short story about that, though, is that they met in, uh, the, in, in, uh, together, and they were called Methodists because of the methodology that they followed. They followed this rigid schedule of, of prayer and, and fasting and, uh, and reading scripture and then doing daily devotional stuff in the morning and in the evening. And, and it was just a process. And if you want to learn more about that, you go check out that video. Maybe I'll do a little card or maybe in the description below I'll link to it. Um, but... Anyway, so I really like this because it speaks to the founding of the Methodist Church. It's that same concept, right? Um, it's it's that it's that if you, um, you, you uh, I don't know how to articulate it, but it really reminds me of of the founding of the Methodism that you have to meet together or you have to do good works. And um, anyway, uh, that was a tangential, right? Let's get into the actual devotional here. Uh, by Candy. So, thanks Candy for doing this. We'll, we'll read the devotional together. She writes, We all go through different phases of life. However, it doesn't matter what phase of life you might be in to how important it is to surround yourself with people who have your back and bring you up, not tear you down. Our community, our friendships, our church family, and anyone else who we spend ample time with are the ones who either make us stronger or who break us. As Proverbs 27, 17 states, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Isn't that the truth? I have to say that I have been one of the lucky ones and have been able to surround myself with God-fearing people the majority of my life. Yes, every now and again, I have to let a snake in, but with enough strong in faith individuals surrounding me, those snakes haven't stayed around 
long. Now isn't that the truth that sometimes we, 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 um, we allow for foxes, as the, as the Bible says, to, to enter the garden, that there are thieves that come in to steal our joy. Um, but luckily, if you surround yourself with a community of believers, that they, they quickly suss that person out and they are ejected from your friend circle. That they can't stay around you long if God's light is shining through you. She continues, friendships can be hard. We won't always see eye to eye with those that we love, which is a blessing. That's interesting. We need to encircle ourselves with people who will call us out when we are wrong or doing something God does not approve of. And as Christian brothers and sisters, we need to do the same for others. This is one of the hardest things that we have to do in life, but with practice, we get better. And it does get a tad bit easier. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and to do good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. That's another passage of scripture, it's quotation. So that's really neat, uh, Candy. I think she's, she's got some real good insights here into the essence of what it means to be part of a Christian community. This is why it's so important in my mind to, uh, in defense of the church, even the modern day church, that it's important to surround yourself with, as she says, God-fearing individuals, that what that would, I, I would call born-again people, people who have died to themselves and allow Christ Jesus to live through them. That's it's essential, and church is a good part of that. I guess that 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 idea, because when you go to church, you are surrounding yourself um, with people who identify not by their their uh, their societal, let's say, position, not by their economics. No one asks each other how much they make. No one uh, 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 groups themselves by those kinds of ideas, by racial lines or by economic lines or by social lines. They all are there together in church because of one common theme, and that is their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. They believe these, these common themes, and that's why they gather together to for the express purpose of worship. And so... That's why, that's my defense uh, for church in general. It, why it's important to go to church is because it's a vehicle for doing exactly what Candy's talking about. By, by going to church, you surround yourself automatically, um, ritualistically, let's say, uh, in a body of believers, people who believe what you believe and are God-fearing people. And so that's, uh, that's really cool, and I love this passage um, and I like what she has to say about it. So thank you, Candy, for doing this devotional. Uh, let's, let's pray together as we close. Let's pray. Dear Lord, please surround us with strong Christians who will be there for us not only in the good times, but also in the hard times. Allow our hearts and minds to be open to the difficult discussions we might have to have. And let us know who is good for us and who is not. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for, for watching, and, and we really appreciate you keeping us in your prayers, us 12 who are over in Costa Rica for this week. And we'll see you again tomorrow uh, for the penultimate, is it the next to last? No, it's not. We've got a couple more. But uh, uh, for one of the final uh, devotionals for this nine-day period. Thanks again for watching, and as always, go in peace.